Can everybody see and hear me? And let's get my gallery to speaker view. And then let's go ahead and get my slides up. I'll share those. Oh yeah, I gotta move my Q&A over here. I gotta get my chat over here. We got this, we got this. Okay. Okay, can everybody see and hear me and see my screen? Mike, are we good? All right, great. Let's present. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to day four. And I first wanna congratulate you because you have made it through the first three days and we're on the home stretch where it's all downhill from here. And I'm super, super excited because we're actually doing a pretty incredible thing on Saturday. A lot of you had questions about how to generate more leads, which we're gonna do a additional masterclass we put together on marketing and messaging to go from getting your first mastermind client to getting your first 10, your first 100, whatever your goal is and how to do that. Um, I have examples of different posts I've written over the year. We're actually gonna do some live copywriting on the masterclass. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. It's gonna give you all the insights into what you need to begin to generate more leads at scale. Um, taking, you know, for what you're gonna learn in the next few days as well as what you learned already. And then just the nice cherry on top, we're gonna do a bonus masterclass. It's free to attend. If you're registered for the challenge, you are good to go. So just plan on Saturday at 11 a.m., same time as today, same time as tomorrow. On Saturday, we're gonna be doing another masterclass on messaging and marketing. So I'm really excited to share that with you. But today's topic is how to use market research to generate sales. I was talking to Jasmine about this earlier. She's actually sitting on the floor right there. That's why I'm looking down. Uh, Jasmine and I were chatting about when she was a client, this was the secret weapon for her because for so long, and maybe you've been through other challenges, maybe you've tried to build other types of things like courses or consulting program, or coaching program, whatever it is, you know, for so long, it's like, what do you know? What's in your head? Put it on paper, put it out to the world, hope they grab it, right? But when you start with what people actually want, when you start with asking questions of the people who you intend to serve, that changes the game. And your failure rate, although you have many failures along the way, I mean, failure is something to be you know, applauded because you found another way it doesn't work, but your failure rate drops to almost zero because you don't spend three months, six months, a year of your life chasing down a rabbit hole where there's nothing at the bottom, right? and wasting all that time, energy, and money that could be utilized to grow your business. So with market research, we get into conversations with people that allow us to get quickly to the answer of what do they want, what do they need, what are they willing to pay, and how can we roll out this offer as quickly as possible as first to beta, sell it, and then build it because we've verified that there are people willing to pay money because they have paid you money in order to build this thing. Okay, so let's get into it today. I'm really excited. So here's your outcome for the day. We're gonna do at least two market research calls and get to at least one yes. Now I had you start to book these yesterday because sometimes people's schedules are a little wonky. Uh, I gave you a script to put on your social media or your list or wherever you're interacting with people. You can also reach out to people individually with a slight modification on that script and just start to book these 15 minute calls even though you don't know all the questions you wanna ask yet. I'm gonna give you a very short to the point script today. We do much more and we go really deep into this in, in other places, but for now, for today, we're going to just give you the minimum viable product, the minimum effective dose, if you will, so that you can get the, what you need to go and get your first client, and then we can continue to expand from there. Sound good? Let's get into it. Okay, so who's committed? First and foremost, let me see in the chat, who is committed to getting at least two calls on the books ASAP, if they haven't already, and getting at least one yes. One person who says, yes, I'm willing to, to do this, and I want to put down some money. Yes, I, ASAP, I am. Awesome. Okay, great. Let's rock and roll. Glad to hear I'm not the only one. Okay, so yesterday, you should have created your HOD, which is your hypothetical offer document. And again, this doesn't have to be a 50-page thing. If it's more than two pages, it's probably too much. Half a page to two pages is perfect. A lot of people just created a short post on Facebook with all the different prompts from the workbook. And it's really simple when you just do it. And you don't worry about it being perfect. You just do the best you can now based on what you know. And then you fill in the gap later, right? We're not trying to make this perfect. We are well underway now to getting our first yes for our mastermind. And this will allow us to have a cheat sheet that we can begin to refine and work from when we're talking to people, gaining insights along the way and refining it as we go. Okay, so if you haven't already, please post your HOD in the Facebook group and don't overthink it, just do the best you can. You gotta take action to get clarity. The MR calls will help you to get even more clear. So why market research calls? And you know, 
honestly, I've tried every which way to grow a business. I've launched probably over a hundred products. I've got books out. I've got courses out. I've done JV. I've done affiliate. I've done big launches. I've done small beta launches. I've done everything in between. And the reason I teach this is because it works. It works for most people most of the time. There are some people that are exceptions and they'll say, do it a different way. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying that this works most for most people most of the time because it's based on scientific principles, which are really difficult to screw up. If you just follow the process, you will get the result. And a great experiment, if you follow the steps, you will get the result each and every time. That's, what is, that's the difference between science and conjecture and hearsay and making it up, right? It's like, I, if I take this experiment, I perform it in Switzerland tomorrow, it's going to have the same exact result as it did here, provided the, the circumstances under which I perform the experiment are the same, right? As long as the controlled variables are the same, I will have the same results. And that's what science is, right? It's consistently proving something over and over again and learning more about it as you do it. So if you're a researcher, if you put this researcher hat on for a second, you take off your marketer hat, you take off your, your sales hat, your business hat, your mastermind hat, your whatever hat you normally wear, your mom hat, your dad hat, your kid hat, your whatever hat, you put on your researcher hat, now you're going to think like a researcher. You think, well, I don't need clarity to take action. I can just try stuff out, right? I can take action to get clear because every time I do something, I get an equal and opposite result. Sometimes it's totally not what I expected, but the universe is there to support me and give me feedback of what's working and what isn't. And the universe, in this case, the people you're going to be interacting with are going to give you the feedback that you need to get the clarity that you need to move forward, which will lead you to your next question, your next breakthrough, which will allow you to create an irresistible offer that continues to enroll people for hopefully years to come. Uh, you realize that you don't need data to make decisions, that you can get the data from curious interaction with the problem. That's what a scientist does. They see a problem. They see something they want to fix or prove or disprove, and they look at it and they say, all right, how can I interact with this in a new way so that I can get a different result? And then finally, having and optimizing a hypothesis over time is the most effective way to get to the ultimate solution. That's the one that's proven to be true. And again, this is going to be a working theory because even the theory of gravity is the best we know about gravity right now, right? We can learn new information tomorrow that gives us new insight. You know, for example, I don't know, I'll use a really woo-woo example, but like, there is purported alien crafts that come and visit Earth from time to time from races that are far advanced to what the human race is. And apparently, they're driven by gravity engines. And there are certain people, whether you believe them or not, that say that these gravity engines have been known and studied for you know, decades, right? The government has some examples of ones that crashed in Roswell. And there's a guy that went on Joe Rogan and talked about this for like two hours. Like, I dealt with these. I know what they are. I understand how they work and drew it out, basically, and explained it. I was like, oh man, that's kind of a bummer. Like I spent my whole life like obsessed with like, oh man, is there life outside the world? And he's like, yeah, it's pretty, you know, this is how it works. I'm like, man, that's, that was a little underwhelming. But, you know, if you were to do that science and get to that place where you understood, you would have changed the, the theory of gravity. That We'd have a new working theory of what gravity is and how we can utilize it for our benefit, right? Because you have a better understanding of it through um, continued experimentation or results and all that. So just think of this as like, we have an understanding right now of what our offer is. We want to gain a better understanding of what our offer is in relation to how well it, it matches with the people we want to serve and how much, how often they, they buy it, how often they say yes, how many questions they have, how, how confusing or clear it is. Remember, we want to be clear over clever and so on and so forth. So we take a scientific approach by taking market research calls. We gain clarity that allows us to do better and better and better experiments, which allow us to do, get better and better results. Everybody with me so far? Cool. All right. I'm getting in there 100%. Let's do it, baby. Awesome. Let's go, baby. Ow! Okay, so what are market research calls? Market research calls are 15-minute one-on-one calls with your ideal client to get feedback on their current fears, dreams, struggles, and desires. So, man, we, we talked about how humans are driven by pleasure and pain, and they're driven away from pain and towards pleasure. So this is the types of questions we want to ask. We always want to think, well, what are they trying to get away from, and what are they trying to move towards? And what is the vehicle that I can create and hands of mastermind that can get them from A to B, right? There's so many different vehicles, but we choose masterminds for this challenge. So again, I want you to, to think in terms of how can I create a mastermind that can solve this problem? How can I take a mastermind that can move, uh, create a mastermind that can move them from away from what they don't want and towards what they do want? And it doesn't have to necessarily get them all the way to wherever they want to go in the future, but in the next three months, in the next six months, in the next year, in the next weekend, how can I get them further along the goal, uh, towards the goal that they want? So there's going to be three things that are really important when you do these. Ideally, you do these on Zoom. 
because Zoom offers more uh, opportunities to see people's body language, to communicate with people in different ways. The, the problem with the phone, the great thing about the phone is that it's a little anonymous and you don't have to like worry about, hey, am I wearing pants right now? But uh, I guess I don't have to wear pants when I'm on Zoom. Anyway, I digress. The great thing about Zoom is that you can see people's body language and interact with them. The phone doesn't allow you to do that as much. And it's really difficult to record phone conversations. With a Zoom conversation, it's a lot more easy to record. Uh, and then you can also transcribe and take good notes and have all of your um, hands free for all the different things you're doing. If you have a microphone, you're not holding a phone to your ear. So I prefer Zoom and I recommend Zoom for those reasons. So that's what you're going to do. Do these on Zoom, record them, take great notes, and we're off to the races. So here's how to do a market research call. And we're going to be doing these today, tomorrow, as many as you need to get that first client, get that first yes. And we're on our way. You can get it today, get it tomorrow, get it Saturday, but we're on our way. I just say commit to getting some of these on the books, making your offer, you know, and we'll teach you exactly how to do that and, and getting somebody to say yes. That's the whole point of this challenge is taking something that was completely crazy a week ago and making it real through a scientifically proven process. So first step, you're going to build a little rapport. Now, what is rapport really? Rapport is not talking for 30 minutes about baseball or your kids or the vacation you just went on. Rapport is not, you know, asking everybody nitty gritty details about their life or trying to coach them or commiserate with them. Rapport is not any of those things. Rapport is simply, are you smart? <laughs> are you enthusiastic? Are you sharp? Are you going to waste my time or not? And are you somebody that I should give my full undivided attention to? So if you can establish that in the first minute or two with just a few quick questions, just a little bit of small talk to break, break the ice. Hey, where are you calling in from? Cool, you know, I've been there or whatever. Like just two minutes. Hey, do you want to dive right in and get started? Hey, I know we both have a quick timeline here. We have 15 minutes scheduled. Let's dive right in and get started. Show that you're like ready, on point and able to support them and serve them. Okay, so that's report. You'll have much better times being friendly and firm and an expert and authority and taking that frame than trying to be their friend. I'll just put it that way. Like when you go into the doctor's office, you're not going to make small talk with the doctor for 30 minutes. They're going to come in, they're going to introduce themselves, and they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. And you're going to feel like they know what the hell they're talking about because they're asking great questions and they're not wasting time. And they're, they're obviously very busy and very accomplished. That's the kind of vibe you want to put off. Okay. Uh, not being mean or unkind or discourteous, but it's, it's, a, it's a fine line. So I hope you all get what I mean here. Um, so you're going to ask these four questions one at a time. These are actually five questions. I don't know why we put four. Uh, and then shut up and let them talk, right? You're just going to ask the question and shut up. And you can even frame it this way. You can say, hey, listen, I'm just going to, the way this call is going to go is I'm just going to ask you a few questions and I'm just going to listen to your answer. I'm not going to prompt you or guide you in any way. I just want to hear your answer. And when you feel complete or you feel like, um, you know, you said everything you want to say, just say next question or just pause and I'll move to the next question. I might ask you some follow-up questions along the way, but generally I just want to hear you. I don't want to influence you in any way. That's what you're looking for. So you can frame it that way. And then you ask these questions. What's your biggest challenge right now in this, right? So in X related to the problem, the niche or whatever you're trying to solve, you don't want to be like my biggest challenge is, you know, the election. You don't want to get, get into a rabbit hole. That's like not relevant to what you're talking about. So I would frame this as what's your biggest challenge right now in blank. Make sense? What have you tried in the past to fix it? Or have you tried in the past to fix it? Why is it important that you solve it? So there may be a few more questions here, but these are all questions that are great. So uh, if I had a magic wand and I could solve that for you, what would that look like? What would the solution be? And if I could solve that for you, would you be willing to pay for that? Because there's plenty of things that people need solved in their lives. They're just not really willing to pay for them. Or it's not painful enough to pull out their wallet and say, yes, I want to pay for that. And finally, if so, how much would you be willing to pay? Now, this is the part where people get jacked up because they're like, you know, people don't make the market. Collectively, they make the market, but individually, they do not make the market. So some people are going to lowball you. Some people are just, it isn't painful enough for them. So they might give you a lowball answer, but some people will give you realistic answers. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd pay a thousand bucks for that. I paid 5,000 bucks for that or whatever it is, depending on what your niche is what you're looking to do, you're going to get real answers from some people and other people you won't. So don't take it as gospel. Just take it with a grain of salt and use it as kind of data points on a grid. Like if you're hearing some people are high, some people are low, some people aren't willing to pay at all. It doesn't mean to throw the idea out. Um, it just means to collect that data, take it in and think of ways you could add more value to where people like, I pay any amount of money to solve this because this is, this is huge, right? Um, this is exactly what I need and, and I don't care what it costs. I'm going to make it happen. 
that's where you want to get to eventually. And it's not overnight, but uh, understand that if you get these questions written out on a piece of paper and you can watch the recording if you need to, you'll be able to play with them in a certain way that will allow you to get the results that you're looking for. Because you really just want to be clear on the things that you've missed, right? Because you probably got a lot of it on the ball already if you've written out your offer and you've done what we've said so far. But you're going to get ideas from people giving you feedback in their own words that's going to give you better insights into what they're needing, additional services or features that you could add that you didn't think of before, things that you thought were important that just aren't that important to people, and really just narrow down on what's the one thing that the offer needs to be about. What's the one thing they care about the most? And it's not normally the thing you start out with. You know, uh, there's so many examples. I, I could give a, a bunch of them, but um, you know, I talked about Cole the other day with his individual sales training offer. It's a great offer. It's proven. People love it. But the sales training of teams offer blew it out of the water. It took him a half a million a month inside a year. So in the course of doing the thing, don't be closed off to other possibilities. When you're looking at this data and you're talking to people, what do they really need? What would they really be willing to pay the most for, for you to solve that problem? And then who are the experts you could bring in to do that? And don't get hold up, hold, hung up on that either. If you find a really great problem, trust me, you can find the people to solve it. I promise. Okay. So there's that. Let's keep moving here. So here's some follow-up questions you can ask to dig deeper. So if they give you kind of a surface level answer, if it's not satisfactory, if you're just like intrigued, you want to dig in a little more, you could say, well, how so? And why is that? And what makes you say that? Um, you know, how, would, how, or, how did that make you feel? Or how would that make you feel? What would it mean to you if, what would your day be like if you, and tell me more. This is my favorite. Just tell me more. I'm, I'm interested. Like, tell me more. Why do you, why do you feel that way? Or what, do you, what makes you say that? So these are some follow-up questions you can ask to dig deeper. Here are some questions you shouldn't ask. And I'll show you why in a second. Wouldn't it be great if, right? Because now you're telling them what the solution should be versus gleaning it from what they want. Right? These are leading questions. So don't ask these. What's important to you about, what's most important to you about blah? Is it Y or maybe Z? So this is not a bad question, the first part, but if you're giving them a blank or blank, now there's only two options for them. They're going to say one or the other, and they're not going to give you a third option for the most part, unless they're like really grounded individuals. They're probably going to be led to doing that. This is like a very old school NLP technique. If you want to, you know, it's logic boxing somebody. Would you like to join our call at 11 a.m. or two o'clock? You know, it's like I'm not giving them a third option. I'm not joining at all. So give them open-ended questions whenever possible. And stop talking after you've answered the question because a lot of times people just need a second to collect their thoughts and give you a really cogent response. And if you just barrel right into the next question or you ask some follow-up question, you're not going to get that deep level of answer that you really need. Uh, another thing people tend to do is they coach. And I'm not sure if this is in the slide deck, so I'll just mention it briefly now and I go over more of it later. It's not about you. It's not about what you know. It's not about helping them on this call. All you're looking for is information and data with which you can make decisions about what your offer is going to be. You're not looking to coach these people. They haven't paid you yet. They're not your clients. That would be malpractice, right? If I went in as a doctor and I started prescribing medication to anybody that showed up, whether I had a client relationship with them or not, whether they'd signed the HIPAA forms or not, or whatever other forms I have to sign, I'm not a doctor. So, you know, I'm just inserting terminology here. Uh, but if I went and did that, that would be malpractice. I really need to be clear on what I'm doing. And there needs to be a client relationship established before I start trying to help. Even if that's, you know, what's in my heart and, and what I want to do, it's still really important that I'm clear on the terms of engagement beforehand. Everybody's clear on the rules of engagement beforehand. So, so don't start just coaching people willy nilly and you're not going to get the, you're not going to learn anything new, right? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen twice as much as we talk. Um, don't you think that? Wouldn't you say that? Again, you're putting words in their mouth. Don't ask these kind of questions. Did you want something that does exactly what you think they want instead of figuring out what they actually want. This is very common as well. You are already in love with your solution. You got to fall in love with your prospect, your client, your ideal customer that will give you the, the answers of what they want if you're willing to listen and they're aware of what it is. And not everybody's aware, you know, but, but sometimes part of the creativity of coming up with an offer is taking what they say they want or don't want and saying, well, how could I solve that? How could I prevent that from happening in their life or make sure it never happened again? Okay. So a couple of pro tips here. Make sure to record these calls and transcribe them so you have the offer in their words. This is like so important. 
I, I can't even, because when you begin to write copy and do messaging and marketing, we're going to do more of this on Saturday. Having what they're saying in their own words is a game changer. That's like, I don't know if you've ever read really great copy or really great story where it's like, man, this guy's inside my head or this girl's inside my head. I can't believe they're having these thoughts right now. And it's exactly like it's the conversation I've been having with my friends in our living room. I feel like I'm being watched. Like that's the level of intimacy you want to create in your messaging so that your people raise their hand and come running instead of zone out. Because nowadays, like it's, it's not good enough to just write stuff. It's not good enough to just say, hey, I want to work with people. You have to cut through all the noise and get into the conversation going on inside everybody's heads. And the way you do that is you get to know them so well, it's like you're them. It's like you know them better than they know themselves. And the way you do that is by recording your calls, transcribing them. So you have the, the offer in their words. You know exactly what their pains are, desires are, frustrations are, you know, what do they want? What do they not want? And what would it look like to help them get there? Okay. So we talked about that. This will help you generate winning copy later. And if they ask about what you're offering, now this is the fun part. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Just a second. Two pinkies up. Okay, ready? So this is how to turn market research calls into sales calls. So when you start out with these, typically you don't want to put a lot of sales pressure on people to jump on a call. You know, these are just 15 minute calls. You're not really selling anything just yet. You're working on something to sell, but it's not ready yet. So you're not going to pressure somebody on this call. You're not going to be like, hey, let's talk about this. Let's make a decision right now. However, you want to leave the door open in case they are interested in this, but they probably are if they got on the phone with you for 15 minutes just to talk about this problem that they have uh, for them to do that. So there's one of two ways this can go. The client's going to ask you what you have to offer, or you'll ask the client if they're interested in what you're offering. And this is why having your offer ready or most of the way ready is so important because if we didn't have this at this point, we might've blown a great opportunity to bring a client into our business. So the offer is always a work in progress. I don't ever want you to think it's finished, but you've already done a lot of the work. You've laid the foundation now with the, the exercise yesterday and the day before to know what you do, who you do it for, what are some of the, the pros and cons, the, you know, who's, who's it for, who's it not for, what are some of the things they're going to get? And you can make it better and better and better going forward. So you're going to continue to work on it forever. You're never going to stop improving your offers. You're never going to stop creating new offers. This is a system you can use again and again and again, anytime you want to bring something new to the market. And by the way, this is the, the core components of the difference between people who go to a job and expect to be paid and have an entitlement mentality, I deserve a paycheck, to people who go out and create value in the world. At some level, everybody who creates something that is, uh, that is self-employed or, or creates a business or creates a product or service that changes people's lives and helps them starts with a version of this process. This is the key difference between people who create and people who consume, people who lead, people who follow, people who get what they want in life and people who do not. This is it, this process. They're willing to shut up, ask great questions, listen to the answers and do something about it. So that's my solemn urging for you. My, my solemn promise and my solemn urging for you is, is to go out there and use this, te this technology, this information, what I've accumulated for many, many mentors over many years and myself, uh, my own experience as well, to go out there and really change some lives because that's what this is all about. You want to be an entrepreneur, this is the game. What do people want and need? How can I provide it for them? Okay. So if they ask you what you have to offer, book a follow-up call right there and then. You don't have to send them a link. You don't have to like follow by email. You just be like, hey, okay, what do you got next week? I'll, I'm doing some more of these calls. I'll, I think I'm almost there, but let's, uh, let's set up something for next week. And we could even truncate that a little bit more because if you're ready to go and you know, the expectation isn't set that's like, oh yeah, we're going to have a sales call, you can have a call tomorrow. You know, it doesn't have to be that long. And, and normally when I tell people, hey, get some market research on, on the phone, I tell them not to push for a sales call right away because maybe they're not ready. But if you're ready, go for it. You know, it, it's, it's really a matter of integrity. It's a matter of staying consistent with what you said earlier. If you said, hey, I don't have anything for sale yet, and then you try to sell them, you're out of integrity. And even if they let it slide, they're not going to trust you. 
right? If you want to build trust, you have to be commit. You have to make a commitment to consistency and you have to consistently commit to things and then meet that commitment consistently, right? So if you, if you said, Hey, this isn't a sales call, say, listen, I told you this wasn't a sales call. I'm not here to sell you anything. However, I'm working on my offer. It should be done soon. Let's, let's catch up in a couple of days and have a call then and book an hour or whatever it is, you know? Uh, and if it's, if you didn't set that expectation beforehand, that's fine. Just, just ask like, Hey, you know, so this is treading on the line of a sales conversation. Are you comfortable with that or not? And invite them in, you know, is this all right? If we have a conversation about selling you this product or service right now, just be candid and they're going to say yes. or they're going to say no. And you can follow up with, okay, why not? Or why? Okay. Sounds great. Let's do it. You know, as long as you're doing what you said you were going to do and you're clear and consistent with your commitments and you keep your commitments and your word, you're fine. So whichever way you tend to go is totally fine. Uh, And book a call if it's not that time and just say, hey, listen, out of integrity, I don't feel good about pitching you right now and I'm still working on this offer. So let's catch up in a few days. Awesome. Perfectly reasonable. So you can see how these leads now turn into market research calls, now turn into sales calls. Now, if they don't mention it, you can still get them on another call. You could say, hey, listen, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. As I said, I don't have anything for sale right now. I'm not here to sell you anything, but I am working on my offer. And if I decide to make this offer, would you be interested in hearing more about it? Yes or no? And at that stage, they can say yes or they can say no. And if they say no, they just saved you an hour of your time. You don't need to get on another call with them. They're probably not a great fit for what you have to offer. But if they say, yeah, I'd love to hear about it. Great. Book a call right then. I should be ready by this date. Let's have a call then. Awesome. So either way, you're seeing like these market research calls are not a waste of time. They're not moving you in a separate direction from your goals. They're getting you qualified, interested people. They're allowing you to get sharper and sharper on what you're going to offer them. And then you can customize offers for them. You can make masterminds just for people just like that. You can go in the same direction as you thought or different directions as you thought. But this gives you valuable one uh, firsthand data that you can make decisions with that allow you to get clearer and clearer and clearer about what's needed. And when you get really good in business, you just, it's really not a question of, can you serve that person? It's what do you want to commit yourself to? So I have a lot of advanced folks and I'm sure there's some of you out there that are like, well, yeah, I could offer a lot of things, but what do I offer, right? What's the biggest bang or buck for my time? And I, I like to say it's a mastermind, right? Cause it's not a ton of done for you. It's not a ton of ongoing. It's not a ton of time and you can deliver a lot for a high margin without it, you know, taking up everything that you got. But if you wanted, you could do a full done for you service. You could do an agency. You could do anything you like. And this would be the same process. The way you're selling here is not pushy. It's very helpful. It's not, you know, backhanded. It's in integrity. And you're bringing people into your world in a way that's enrolling and exciting. And you're taking the time to really listen to what they want. And then if you double down, provide it, and they get the result, they're going to sing your praises from now till the end of time. They're going to be referral partner. They're going to be testimonials. They're going to be consistently buying everything you put out because you take the time to listen to them where a lot of people don't. A lot of people just put out whatever they think that people want and not. So uh, I usually say in the BAM program, we get people to do 10 to 15 of these. I just want you to do two or three right now and just get to your first yes. That's all I want for now. This is you know a challenge. It's five days long. We're not working together for six months yet. Uh, hopefully we do at some point in the future. But this is the point of this challenge is just to get you a momentum, see how this can work for you, get a yes, and then you're on your way. So here's what you need. A lot of people ask me about tech. I could get really down the rabbit hole on tech. We use a lot of systems in our business. If you've been through any of our funnels, you see we use ClickFunnels, we use ActiveCampaign, we use all these different services to market and to sell. That's not necessary right now. Let's just keep it simple. You can do it with three tools. Calendly, which is a really great little software. I think it costs 15 bucks a month. And it's really clean and it's easy to book and it goes right on their calendar and you can put your Zoom link in there. Uh, we use Google Forms, which is a free service that you can just put together a quick little application or with a few background questions or if they want to transition to a sales call after the market research call, you can use this as the buffer in between those two so that when you're ready to sell, now you have all the data you need and you can not waste a lot of time on the call with you know, background information. And then finally, Zoom, which is what we're using right now. It's a great service if you haven't heard of it. I don't know where you've been living for the last year, but it's probably the most popular video call service that's ever existed. So those are the three. Um, so yeah, we recommend Calendly. Google Forms or Typeform is a great one as well. It's a little prettier. And then uh, Zoom or another recording software. But I really just, I would say Zoom. It's, these aren't expensive. This is like 30 bucks a month worth of software, if that. All right. So now you may be wondering, and I won't let you down. 
how do I book these magical market research calls, Brad? I see the matrix now. I understand how this can work, but how do I book it? The files are inside the computer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, today, we're just sharing our top three. This is how we do it. Ready? Best way to do it are the people who already know, like, and trust you. They're in your phone. They're on your email. They're on your list. They're on your uh, social media platforms. And we'll give you a couple of postscripts from yesterday, but honestly, make a list of 50 people that might be interested in this. You probably have them already. Just put them on a spreadsheet or on a list. Easy. And just start reaching out one by one. And whatever their most responsive medium is, like I tell everybody, don't send me an email. I'm never going to check it. it. You know, I'll check it once a day at best during the week or my system will. If you want me kind of on the daily, hit me up a messenger. If you really need me right now, text me. Don't even bother calling. Like I don't even respond to phone calls because it just interrupts my flow too much. I get a bajillion robo calls a day. I don't do it. So like I tell people that's the best way to get in contact with me. So you know these people, they probably know and like and trust you've dealt with them before. Just think to yourself for a second, who are they? Why would they be a good fit? And where are they going to be most responsive? And reach out to them there, right? Simple as that. Some of them might be carrier pigeons, might be smoke signals, might be Pony Express. However, they're most responsive. Get them on the horn. Okay, great. You've already submitted your post from yesterday. It's a great start. Here's two post scripts you can follow. So we gave you a, a, a very, you know, shot across the bow, very clean, easy. Hopefully you've already posted that. Hopefully you've gotten some, some market research calls booked already. But here's two other post scripts you can follow. So this is a friend of mine, Andrew Cruzy. He does these things called a mission post. He says, I'm on a mission to help you know, 10 or however many number of this type of person to get this benefit in the next, this amount of time. Who's with me, right? So I'm on a mission to help 100 entrepreneurs to launch a mastermind in the next six months. Who's with me? And you'll get people like, rah, rah, rah. You'll get people that are excited. You get people like, yeah. And you get people that are like, I'm interested. That's cool. Or I might ask something similar, which we'll talk about more on Saturday with a lot of these different post types that you can use. That's like, who's going to build a mastermind over the next six months? Who's going to build a mastermind in 2019? And you get all the comments, you follow up with those people and you jump onto a market research call and then you jump onto a sales call if it's a good fit. Simple, easy, low tech, anybody can do it. And then there's what I call a hero's journey post. We've talked a little bit about storytelling and the hero's journey today and in the previous um, days. But I would use this very specifically in this case is talking about, this is great if you're an expert or if you're like working through a problem in real life where you have a story about working through a problem that they might be experiencing. So where you talk in an engaging way about your story relating to that problem, what you did to solve it, and if anybody else is struggling, offering to hop on a call. Simple as that, all right? And this could be anything you've dealt with in your life. You may never have sold this before. You may never have marketed this before. You don't have a business around this. Doesn't matter. Like anything you've overcome that was difficult for you that you want to help other people overcome, you could write about it. So if your offer lends itself to that, do that. That that's usually very valuable. Or you could do the mission post, or you could do like the who's who's doing X and Y time, or that kind of post. So that just any kind of simple post. You can go back to I think module three. We have a really good script, but this should get you the three or four or five, whatever amount of market research calls as quickly as possible. Uh, referrals. Here's your next thing. And we're going to give you more scripts as well that you can use. So make sure you go back to the, um, to the recording on these guys. So you're going to identify one to five people who would know people who would be a good fit for your mastermind. So if you need to go outside your purview, if you don't know and like and trust these people already, you can go and find people who would, right? I, tell, I call them the hubs of the spokes. You want to know as many hubs in life as possible. Who are the people that know the people? Who's the guy who's got a guy or the gal who's got a gal? And those are the people you want to reach out to. You say, hey, man, or hey, you know, sister, whatever you're, however close you are, hope this finds you well. Do you know anybody who's having trouble with this problem? I would love to talk with them to discuss a new offer I'm considering putting out there. I would offer you a referral commission if I end up closing a sale at some point with one of your people. Would you be up for that? Sound fair enough? Want to chat about that? And then you could get all your clients in one shot. Like when I first launched the Build a Mastermind program, I had a few affiliate partners that were just friends of mine. We never did a big affiliate launch. I just asked two or three people. I'm like, hey man, I'd like to test this offer out. Can you send me 10 people? And I'll give you half the money. And they're like, sure. Great. It wasn't anything they were offering. So, you know, game on. Fair enough. Uh, and finally, Facebook groups. Facebook groups are great because they already have collections of people 
that might want your product or service. But here's the thing I don't like about Facebook groups because everybody does this right now. Oh, I just want to do some market research. I just want to do this. And a lot of this came from me, by the way, in this industry. I just want to be clear about this. A lot of people weren't talking about this six months, 12 months, two years ago because I've been talking about it for a lot longer. I'm not saying it's a new thing, but this is a lot of what you're seeing now or where it comes from. But there's a very clear, specific difference about the way I do this versus the way a lot of people do this, which is being enrolling and having people be excited and interested to help you and being a spammer that gets you banned and just everybody hates that, right? So if you're going to post in a Facebook group, I just want you to, to send this message to the admin. Hey, I was wondering if I could do some market research for the few members of your group. I don't have anything for sale yet, but I'm considering making an offer that has this benefit. Instead of trying to sneak past one of the goalie and just posting without asking, I hate when people do that because I do. I hate when people do that. I figured I'd just offer you a referral commission if I end up closing a sale at some point with one of your people. Would that be all right? I'm happy to hop on a quick call to discuss if you'd like. Otherwise, I promise to be value adding and not pushy. I'm just looking for clarity on my offer by talking with my target market. This will blow most admins' minds because they've just never had somebody be as forthright as that. Most people just post their dumb MLM and they block them and they never think about it again. And that happens every day. There's people in this group. I had a ban already. Like, it's just like nobody cares about your, your, your thing, your side hustle. They're here to learn about masterminds. That's why they're here. And nobody is going to trust you because you don't have any rapport built. You don't, they don't know, like, and trust you at all. So it's a waste of your time to do that. But if you get in with the admin, they might even interview you. They might be excited to post. They might say, yeah, heck, go for it. Cool. And then want to jump on a call. Like you might have just made a new friend just because you took the extra minute to ask. And just from a logistical standpoint, sometimes they won't see the messages, like on Facebook especially, because um, there's, there's what you call it. There's uh, the other folder where your inbox messages might get lost. And I've already thought of that. So the way I get around that is I send them the message and then I simply tag them in something that's a post that they're already on, like something they wrote in the group. I say, hey, uh, I didn't know how to contact you, so I sent you a DM. Can you check and let me know? Or I sent you a private message just now. And you tag their name on the post, so they'll see that for sure. And then they'll go into their other folder and check it out. Cool. So I'm just going to leave this slide up, take some water, let you guys write this down. You can also go back to the recording if you need to later. This is a game changer, though. Be enrolling, offer money. Again, I gave the first few clients I, I brought on, I gave away half the money. I was happy to do it because I just wanted to test whether this offer was good or not, whether I could, you know, whether, whether people needed it or not, whether it was going to scale or not. And two years later, we're still doing it. We're making it better even. It didn't, help, it didn't hurt that Tony Robbins and Neil Graziosi started doing it six months later <laughs> with KBB, but... I digress. Well, it actually worked out great because I got to work with two of my heroes on it. Um, but, you know, you may never get that level of validation of your offer, but if people are buying it, that's good enough. That means you're on track and you can always get better. So never, never rest in your laurels, never get, you know, in your ego about it and just keep moving forward and being scientific about it and learning new things and refining it over time. All right. So let's talk action steps. So you're going to do two market research calls. You're going to get at least one yes. And yes means you got a deposit and now they are committed. So how do you get a deposit? I know your next question. I can read your mind. Let me just go back to this, make sure everybody got this. So two market research calls, one yes. A yes means you got a deposit and now they are committed. Let's make this easy. A hundred bucks. Because if they're not willing to put up a hundred bucks, they're probably not that serious. So Awesome. I'm so glad you're in. To hold your spot, I'll just take a $100 deposit right now. It's completely refundable or transferable if you can't make this mastermind, presuming you're doing a one-off. I have a good deal of work ahead of me, so I just want to make sure that people are really invested and not just interested so that I can plan the mastermind experience in good faith. And if they're like, okay, well, that's reasonable enough. Here's 100 bucks. Great. Will that be credit card, PayPal, or Venmo? And again, I recommend people ask me this all the time. In order for people who are just starting out, they don't require a lot of paperwork. Stripe, PayPal, Venmo. I'm not really a fan of PayPal, but it's probably the most ubiquitous thing that everybody gets. Um, they held on to my money for a long time one time and I never really forgave them. So so cool. I'm so glad you're in. Hold your spot. Take a hundred bucks. This means your guests get in the game. Give them their money back. If they need their money back. You know, it's not, not a lot of money, but it's, it's enough to be like, yeah, I'm serious. Here's some money. Go forth and build this thing. And we're, we're ready to go get other people. 
And that's what we want. That's the whole point of this entire five day challenge is just somebody said yes and put down some money for you to go build something that was just an idea on Monday. Pretty cool, huh? And I believe everybody in this group has what they need to do that right now. They can do that today and they can put it on the Facebook group and celebrate everybody can celebrate together and um, we can move on to the next thing, which is more about sales. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about selling and running your sustainable world-class mastermind. If you still have questions about what a mastermind is, how it runs, this is the day that will give you the most clarity on that. So stay tuned and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, we only ran 40 minutes today, so you got an extra 20 minutes to go work on this. Go forth, take action, watch the replay. I'll see the VIPs in the Q&A in just a minute. And make sure to mark your calendars because Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific, we're also doing an additional bonus masterclass. It's a messaging and marketing masterclass. We're going to do live copywriting. We're going to give you eight or seven or eight different post types you can put up to continue to grow. And this is geared towards like your next 10 to 100 mastermind clients without having to run ads, without having to you know, learn a whole bunch of new skills. This is just stuff you could do with your Facebook or your LinkedIn. So you definitely want to be there on Saturday. It's bonus content on top of this. I want to over deliver for you guys. So uh, have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll catch you tomorrow for day five.